everybody. We are here and we are live with our fellow ninja pinner. Jill Kelly is here and she took the challenge. She took the challenge and I think she's the only one that I heard from. So if you uh, took the board challenge, drop a comment down below because I didn't hear from anybody else um, who was brave enough to take the challenge. So to review that last week, I uh, the last two weeks, I guess, I wanted to show you. It was kind of, uh, it was in a live broadcast from two weeks ago. If you're not sure what that is, you can uh, go look at the uh, gallery of videos to see if you can hunt that one up. And what I did was I, I showed you some tips on keywords and how important they are on Pinterest and how you can use them to rank your board number one. And in order to prove that, I did a challenge because I thought, well, you know, it's very possible for me to rank boards up pretty high in, in a matter of a week. Um, I do it on a regular basis, so we'll just challenge myself with this one. And so after a week, it happened. Was able to rank in the number one position for uh, more than one keyword. And so what happened was, as I challenged you all to do it, I showed you exactly what to do. I challenged you all to do it, and one person took on the challenge, and she did it. And it's Jill. So we're going to take a peek here at what's going on. And before before we do that, let's let's introduce Jill a little bit more. Um, so Jill has been using Pinterest and she runs an e-commerce business. And what else do you want to share? I'll let you share more about yourself. Um, I've been using Pinterest for a while. I have a VA who helps and schedules things on Tailwind for me. And I see the difference. When you pin more, I see more sales. So I think it's worth it. Um, I'll have to see how it goes in the future. But I like I like Pinterest. It's not expensive. It's a great way to market yeah. without cost. Right. There's a lot of it that you can use just organically and get really good results organically. And then if you start seeing some really good results organically on certain pins, then that's those are the ones that are worth uh, increasing by using the sponsored pin campaigns because you're seeing some really good traction on a pin that you have. And I would I would put some money behind those and let them go out a little bit further for you and work a little bit more for you. If you understand how to do the Pinterest promoted pins correctly, it really doesn't cost that much money. Um, there's some there's some little tips there and secrets and keys to be able to do it right without having to spend lots and lots of money on it. It's, it's actually cheaper than what many other campaigns are and, and other platforms. Um, especially with Google AdSense is a lot more expensive and Facebook ads tend to be a bit more expensive too as well. So it's, it's a cheap way to get your, your pins out there with the sponsored pin campaigns. Um, let's see if there's anybody down below who is, has anyone else been taking the board challenge? Nobody? Oh, come on people. It's oh, not that hard. <laughs> Jody's here. Hello, Jody. Awesome. She was able to catch another live. She I, she works um, during the daytime. She's got a day job. So she's able to be here live, which is really cool. She's like sneaking away at work. She's on her lunch break or something and hiding in the corner and trying to watch it live. I would never do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> okay. You've taken the board challenge, Jody. Is, is That's awesome. You'll have to share that with me. Um, send me a private message and share that with me. I'm going to be talking to you actually tomorrow night because we're going to be doing a consulting call together. Jody was a winner of a free consulting call a few weeks ago. So we're going to do that tomorrow night. We'll have to talk about that and she'll show me. Oh, <laughs> she doesn't want anybody to know. <laughs> she says, she says, shh. <laughs> Is what she's saying down here in the comments. Hey, Teresa, how are you? <laughs> she says hi to Jill as well, <laughs> saying hi to everybody. Awesome. Yeah, no, we're we're gonna. I'll I'll take a. It'll be fun to take a peek and see what you do with your board challenge because I think that's really cool and I hope more people take these uh, board challenges. Um, so Jill, you do e-commerce. Yeah. What, what platforms do you sell on? Uh, Amazon, not eBay so much anymore. Uh, Redbubble. And I'm getting into more of those. Uh, yeah. I looked at Zazzle yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to look for more. Right. Some of the print on demand companies. Yeah. yeah. I really yeah. like that. Definitely do Redbubble. Um, I'm still loading up to shop. Uh, sorry. Sunfrog. A lot of people. Oh, right. Yeah. A lot of people uh, uh, have been leery of Sunfrog because of the lawsuit that happened uh, by Harley Davidson and Harley Davidson one. 
You know what? Um, I think that Sunfrog is a pretty reputable company. If you go to YouTube and watch a lot of the videos from the company founder, you'll see what's going on behind the scenes. Um, that is someone who I think the founder actually used to sell on Amazon. Um, and I think it was wholesale at that point before Merch by Amazon existed and sold on other platforms as well and had some issues with it. And that was the inspiration for why founding um, Sunfrog. So it's kind of interesting to look into that a little bit further. But I think that they have um, a, a pretty good um, reputation overall. It's just unfortunate there were some sellers who went too far is what it was. And of course, you know, when that happens and uh, someone is held responsible and I think that Sunfrog just kind of, you know, gotten in, in the middle of it, basically. They were caught in between and I think that they will recover just fine. I don't see that to be a problem or an issue. They do have really good quality products, so I wouldn't worry about it. Hey, Nancy's here. Hello, Nancy. Ooh, Society6. Jody's asking, do you sell on Society6? No, well, I don't even know what that is. That's another print on demand company. I haven't tried it yet either. So if you have, uh, mm -hmm. drop some comments down below. Yeah. I have heard some people who have had really good results with Society6 and Spreadshirt. Um, it, I think it's worth trying. I think every print on demand company is worth trying. Mm -hmm. And by trying, I mean uh, commit to at least 20 different designs and just throw them up there and see what's going to happen. If you get a sale, then you know it's worth scaling up. But there's somebody out there that's interested within that market in your stuff. And I wouldn't be afraid of, of doing that. Um, I know it's a lot of time involved. So what I would do is hire a virtual assistant that can help you specifically with that so you don't feel as though you're overwhelmed uh, by being spread too thin. Definitely do that. It's, it's well, well worth it um, yeah. to do. Okay. Um, <laughs> Oh, yes. This is a great question. If anyone is doing Society6 right now, this would be awesome to answer. I'll maybe have to go um, ask uh, friends. Um, Fernando is a great friend. He would know. Maybe I'll have to go and ask him. Um, Jacob Topping, great friend. Awesome. Him and Tara. Uh, Anthony and Kevin. Um, uh, from over at Merch Empire. Uh, I don't think they're doing so much on the other platforms, though. They're pretty focused on Merch by Amazon. So I would say uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to ask uh, Fernando. Maybe we can tag him um, in the group and uh, see if he can help us out with, with answering this question really, really well of trying to get the good images from Society6. I haven't uh, tested that quite yet. So... Um, hmm. Uh, what I'm thinking is, is if, if I have a chance to test Society6 and get in there, I don't think it would be too hard to figure out how to get those images into a pin. Um, and you can do it in multiple ways. Definitely you can do lifestyle images, but you don't have to make everything a lifestyle images and a lifestyle image in order for it to get good traction in Pinterest. You can just take the, the picture of the shirt and use different elements on your pin. Um, and arrange it that way. Not everything has to be a lifestyle picture with that. Aren't there, um, Teresa, Teresa, aren't there services that um, will make lifestyle images for you? A place it. Place it. Okay, Pla place it you can use, but it's it's not cheap. Okay. It's, it's kind of expensive. Um, yeah, I think it's expensive for what for what you get. It would be nice if they could reduce that price down a little bit or... I mean, I, they never have an app sumo deal. You know, I look for that kind of stuff. I never see it, but it's pricey uh, for what you receive. And I feel like there needs to be a competitor. Yeah. They're that really nice. Nice. The reason why they're keeping their prices up so high for truly what it is, is because they have zero competition. So here's, here's a thought for the fellow entrepreneurs who are out there. I know some of you, there are many of you who do have some good coding skills, um, who are truly webmasters. If you could develop something that is affordable for us to use where we could get some lifestyle images created quickly and be able to put those in our Pinterest pins, we would love that dearly. Something more affordable than Placeit. Placeit just doesn't have any competition right now. 
we need it to be focused specifically for people who are in the e-commerce world who are selling products. That would be great. Yes, it can be used for people who sell courses and eBooks too. I think that's awesome, but really there's a big genuine need for people who are selling physical products, whether it's print on demand or they're buying wholesale or uh, in a marketplace somewhere, there's a real genuine demand for some high quality um, images that can be lifestyle images. Yes, I agree, Teresa. The place it is expensive. They used to have lower resolution images for free. I know I used to use the free ones. I did. And they got rid of them. I mean, it's they're really dominating the marketplace. And I'm not trying to say anything bad about place it because I think what they're doing is awesome. But we it would be nice to have uh, some choices as far as costs so that everybody can have the opportunity to get in and not dominate it quite so much. The only thing I can think of that would help with that is if someone just becomes a competitor to, to place it. Here's another thought. A year ago, I think it was, Sunfrog was um, using Place It. So when you were uploading your designs to Sunfrog, there used to be a place inside of Sunfrog under your managed designs where you could promote your product. And what that would do is it was an integration with Placeit and they would allow you uh, certain images that were lifestyle images that you could then go out and promote into social media. For mm -hmm. some reason, Placeit stopped that integration with Sunfrog. So now we can't use that either. And I thought that was my my back end solution to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a workaround that I figure out. And that was like, ooh, here's a workaround where I, you know, don't have to spend quite so much money on Place It. And then of course, Place It probably figured that out and they removed themselves out of the integration. So I would love to see something else. Uh, become available where we can easily create the lifestyle images, not be quite so expensive. I know that Make Merch does have some options for lifestyle images. I would like it to be a little bit more natural um, looking uh, images, more realistic, more natural, uh, meaning someone standing outside, <laughs> you know, not like up against a, a, a rainbow colored brick wall. <laughs> you know, or it doesn't where it obviously looks like a model, you know, but just an average person who's you got some grass around or something that looks like every day. Right. It looks a little bit more natural. That would be great. But uh, I do know that Make Merch does have some options, but I would like it to look more natural and more like a real person because that's how people want to see themselves and then not have the the full face in the picture, like cut off some of the head. <laughs> that sounds terrible. That's me. <laughs> what if we could get some lifestyle photos <laughs> where they cut off the heads <laughs> or just not show the faces, that would be great because we don't want to show the faces on Pinterest <laughs> or in any of our social media campaigns because they just don't do as well. Um, oh my with that, yeah, I was okay. Uh, Joey says it would be easy to do. The photos it would take the most amount of time. Yeah, yeah. If somebody could like be the next place at competitor, I'm telling you, you would get tons of business right now. It would be awesome. Um, yes, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about with Jody saying you're here. I don't know about you, but I'm always standing in front of a rainbow colored brick wall with my hair blowing in the wind. I love that. That is awesome. <laughs> I know, you know, it's hard for, it's hard for people to to really look at that and want to buy it because they need something that looks realistic, you know, like, yeah, I'm, you know, exactly. That's what I do is I stand in front of a rainbow brick wall. I, that's what I mean. It's something that, that is a little bit more natural and it looks appealing. And, um, oh, this is cool. Teresa's got another comment. Something funny and interesting to me the other day. I was on my Instagram account and somebody started to follow me. I checked out the their Instagram profile and it was a list of fun sunfrog shirts to buy and one of them was my sunfrog shirt that they were marketing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome that they were marketing your your shirt off of sunfrog. See, that's a reason why mm -hmm. it's 
probably a good idea to try and test all of the print on demand company sites because you just never know <laughs> what could happen. There could be someone who's a big fan of yours and they start marketing your stuff for you and you have no idea. Um, so if they have a really, did you, oh, Teresa, did you check their big, their Instagram following? Do they have a, like a huge following? That'd be cool. What I would do is I would reach out to them, send them a message and say, thank you so much for promoting my, uh, one of my designs off the of Sunfrog and give them, put some into uh, collections and then send them your collections. Although they may want to create their own collections because they want to have their own affiliate link though. Mm -hmm. um, but you could send them more information about what, how they can find more of your stuff inside of Sunfrog if they're a huge fan. That would be great. You can get more stuff. Okay, without going too much further with this, <laughs> let's uh, travel on over to Pinterest so that we can take a peek here at what's going on. Let me rearrange this somehow where you can see better. Let's see if, yeah, that doesn't help. Yeah, it's not the best, is it? That's probably the best that we can do in order to make it big enough for you all to see on Pinterest here. Okay. So what we did here was we took a look at these uh, the keywords that Jill was targeting. She was targeting just a three word keyword phrase, cool coffee mugs, that's it. And you can see um, how she did this. Now to review with your keywords, I'm gonna move this out so it's just pins, all pins, is I'm gonna look at the word um, mugs and I'm gonna hit return. And I wanna see what kind of keywords that come up. And the ones that are over to the left are the most important. The ones over to the right are the least important. You can also hit the space bar and we want to take a look at, or might have to back it up and waiting for the suggestive search. It's not wanting to happen. Why does it not want to happen? There you go. Oh, have to re-wake up Pinterest for just a second and do a, Quick refresh. I wanted the suggestive search or the autofill where it does the drop down. And it wasn't wanting to drop down for me. See, there's a drop down. The yeah. suggestive search, or some people call it the autofill. This is what I was looking for with the DIY, the funny, the cute, the unique. So any of these words are actually really important too for keywords where you could take and name your board any one of these. So if you have funny coffee mugs or funny mugs, cute mugs, unique mugs, you could do that. And of course, with the word mugs, we have a lot of things over here that people are looking for. Coffee, by the way, is way over here. I'm surprised by that. I thought it would be here, right in the first position, but it's not. So I, um, with the cake mugs, people are think are looking for the recipes to make cake in a mug. And I was just at the, when I was at the store last time, I noticed that um, Duncan Hines, I think it is, started, making this product and they have it on the shelves now where you can make your have a you can buy um all of the ingredients put together to make your cake in a mug i mean so you don't have to follow these recipes so what they did was they probably were inspired by that idea by seeing it float around on pinterest and social media and then they turned it into a product hmm. so that's something where yes we go to pinterest for marketing but at the same time we use it for research and if you find something that is trending and popular, you could certainly turn it into a product and that's just what they did. I can't remember if it's Duncan Hines or if it's Betty Crocker. I'm thinking it's Duncan Hines that did that. Um, that's pretty progressive. If I type in coffee, then we're gonna see what else pops up here. And I'm not getting mug yet, which is interesting. So if I hit the space bar or hit return and I wanna see if, yeah, mugs is way over here. Okay, so if we are truly wanting to focus on coffee mugs, we're going to come over here and we're going to add the keyword coffee mugs, and then we're going to see what choices we have here. There's all kinds of them. We, we can add to it unique. We could add funny, creative, cute, um, anything that would be relevant where you have a lot of pins that would fit for it. Coffee mugs for men, if you want to be a little bit more specific, um, would be good, especially right now. This might be trending because of Father's Day. There's many, many, many as you as you come over here um, to the right. And you can add any one of these. So what I'm going to do is um, add uh, the keyword um, 
cool in front of it. And you can see that we still have some keywords coming up. So that's telling me that this is a phrase that people are truly searching for in the Pinterest engine, uh, search engine. So if you were watching the, the live yesterday between one of the um, marketing experts behind at Pinterest with um, Elise over at Tailwind, it was really good. I want to recap that maybe next week and go into some specifics about that. But definitely watch that live video. It's inside of the Pin Traffic Power group because you're going to learn so much from that. There was a mm -hmm. lot of questions that were answered that we've all been wondering for a very long time. And many, many things were confirmed that was amazing. Um, getting the right amount of information so that you know exactly what to do in order to really leverage Pinterest better for you. So you could make this into a four keyword phrase if you want to and say, cool coffee mugs, awesome. Cool coffee mugs travel. Uh, uh, Teresa, I made it cool coffee mugs travel. Oh, you so did? I, I'm third um, for cool coffee mugs and first for travel at the end. Oh, really? You put travel on the end of it? Yeah. Yeah. So Just because of, that, the because of the suggested boxes, I thought, well, yeah. you know, as well. Yeah, you can, you can add on a fourth. What I do is I look at cool coffee mugs. I go to the boards and I want to see, check out the competition. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I scroll down to see how many boards there are. It's good that there is a lot of boards. That means there's a lot of people with an interest and there's enough people searching for this. Now, if I add on travel, let's see what that looks like. Yes, there's still plenty here. Yeah. There's still a lot, so that's good. I don't know and why you, people collect these. I mean. And you are number one right here. Yep. So this is it. This is her right here. She is number one for cool coffee mugs travel. And if we do cool coffee mugs, you're going to yep. see her right here. She's number three in position. And those all happen within a week. Mm -hmm. So how did you do it, Jill? Uh, <laughs> It wasn't that hard. I posted uh, every day and not at night because I couldn't this week. So I posted like between 11 and 1. I'm Pacific Standard Time um, about five of my own and five of others. And then the last mm -hmm. few days it was other people's stuff because I didn't want to put my stuff over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I would post a little to uh, both phrases. And it didn't take long at all. It was really not that hard. Just consistency. I made sure I did it like the same time every day. And that has nothing to do with what my VA was doing. I didn't tell her anything. So I, I'm sure she's not even aware what's going on, which is cool. Um, and did you, <laughs> did you manually get into Pinterest or did you use Tailwind? I, for this challenge, I used, did it manually. Okay. And I did it all within like five or 10 minutes, which I know is probably, they don't like that, but I was just, I would go quickly, <laughs> I would quickly go and pin and then I'd be done with that. And it was pretty easy. And then I found some of my other boards had ranked well just by themselves without mm -hmm. me doing anything special for the week. So that was nice. Um, and with these, uh, boards, did you have them already started and you just went through it and re keyworded up your board and put more pins in there, or did you start from scratch? Uh, they were already boards and I didn't do anything with my keywords, I just added more pins. Mm -hmm. Um, and the I think I don't know if this helps or not, but my VA made a cover um, page. That mm -hmm. says cool coffee mugs. So that's I think that makes it stand out. But that's mm -hmm. my opinion. all of my brands have the the title at the top like that. Yeah, yeah. So um, people actually know what it is. Yeah, like right here. Yeah. Which is recommended by Pinterest for product pins. Mm -hmm. Um we don't, you know, especially if we don't have, if we're not using lifestyle images, which not every product needs to have a lifestyle images image in order for it to be effective. It does help to have this text overlay so that people understand what it is and that it's for sale, that you could buy it. Mm -hmm. I would put a, a call to action on it as well, where it says shop now or um, see the entire collection 
or view more, something that says there's more on the other side of this pen? Um, I think on the board it says shop now. Okay. I oh. know my long pins say shop now on them. Is it okay for me to go into the board yeah. or yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to share anything that. No, that's, <laughs> coffee mugs you, is not my main focus, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to share anything that is um, going to reveal too much information about your business because it's all, you know, we have to hold things in confidence um, sometimes, but there's a lot of really great uh, looking pins in here, very creative looking pins. So yeah. this would be considered a lifestyle pin like this. Mm -hmm. um, but then there are other pins here that are not. They're just, you know, one coffee mug. The um, ones I picked, uh, mine are very boring pins unless we make them, you know, ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I The ones that I picked to pin, I wanted them to have, you know, be very unique. Mm -hmm. And like, not like that black mug that was boring. Yeah. Uh, so did you, how did you get that pin for, is that pin in here somewhere um, where your VA okay. created the, oh, here it yes, is. Yes, there it is. This one. So this yeah. is this is a really cool looking pin. So this is. Um, did you make this for a cover board? Yes. Okay. What and I then would it's do, also a pin. Yeah. What it's I would. Yeah, it's a pin. You have to um, right. create the pin first, and then you can turn it into a cover board. Um, and I, um, I, my I didn't have the URL attached to it. <laughs> oh she, no! She you got to have the URL. Yeah, so we I put those in and we had a little mm -hmm. discussion. And um, so that really helped. Yeah, so you're using this um, for two things. Yes, it can be used as a pin, but it's also, it's purposely sized small and square for it to really be used as a cover board. Mm -hmm. um, it really isn't, you know, the purpose of that. a pin, a typical pin that you'd want to do, but it's it's for a vanity so that when people go, to your your Pinterest profile and they look at all of your boards, they will see this common branding happening through your boards and they might be really impressed by that. So it's really more for uh, vanity or aesthetic appeal. Um, and I know that um, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't help you with your board overall as far as ranking your board up high or people finding your board. However, what I have found is that sometimes when I create some kind of a vanity board cover, that little tiny pin that's not the typical pin, it's a small square image like this that you have to have the right size for it to work as a board cover, sometimes it can really take off and almost mm -hmm. go viral. And I, I, when I see that, I think it's crazy, you know? And I think, wow, well, then it was worth it. It was worth mm -hmm. the time and effort to make that little board cover <laughs> because when there was a link attached to it and of course keyworded up the pin description and people just started saving it like crazy mm -hmm. uh, once they saw that. So I thought, well, then it's worth doing the board covers. Um, so that's something that's completely optional. It's a vanity thing. If you are going to create a board cover, I would definitely keyword up the pin description Definitely include your URL link because you never know when something might take off and it could be a vanity board cover that takes off and goes wild on Pinterest. And it is cool. You can do your vanity board covers in a number of ways. You don't have to put your products on the vanity board covers, but you can if you want to. You can just have it as a, um, a plain colored background or you, it could be a lifestyle image that you want to have. You could... You could put your branding on there if you want or not. It's up to you. But this is really cool because it does pull everything together when you look at your overall um, profile. So we got just a mixture of all kinds of mugs going on here. And as you scroll through, you probably see the difference between the pins that really grab your attention mm -hmm. and the ones that are, you know, they're okay. But I'm probably going to pass them by and not spend as much time mm -hmm. um, looking at them. And I think the ones that you chose that are the unusual looking mugs, like this one really grabs my attention, this pin right here. Yeah. That one is worth making. Let's see if I can get a close up shot of this where you can see. So there's a mug at the top. There is what's called text overlay. This is a text overlay right here in the middle. 
and it's just a black background to make it easy to read. So you wanna make that easy to read. Right here is the URL link. This is a watermark and also for branding. And it looks sort of like a cool website, the 11 best. Interesting, might learn some stuff from what they're doing on their website. And they have a, a sample of just two different mugs, that's it. But we know that there is 11. So if I mm -hmm. click through this pin, I'm gonna find a jackpot of 11 of them, which is amazing, and 11 of the best. <laughs> In their opinion. I want, I want the best ones, right? I don't wanna waste my time with the junk, I want the best. That's and those how are people just, think. And those are all POD, looks like, products, I mean. Probably, yeah. Yeah, probably. Um, we can take a look at that closer to see what they're doing. Let's see. Let's go look at it. Let's go read it. <laughs> it's, an, it's an article, uh, Rich Pin, I think, I believe. Let's see here if it is. It says read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, instead of view it. So that's interesting. They, they're they not using Shopify. If they are, they need to do their Pinterest integration. But nope, this is... This is um, not Shopify. This is probably using WordPress from what I can see and tell. Um, it's running a little bit slow because I think they've got some ads going on. Yeah, it made you be very fuzzy and go slow too. Yeah, it's just too much loaded up. So maybe we can't do, do that right now because it's slowing down the bandwidth. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> I didn't lose everybody. Did I lose everybody? He's just taking too much bandwidth right there. Okay. Are we still there? Hopefully, I didn't lose y'all. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, um, I wanted to, uh, you know, comment about anything else that you want to share about what you did to to get your board number one and number three. Uh, no, I didn't do anything that special. I really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was so. Uh, but my question is, because I don't use Pinterest personally. I, I don't. I, my daughter does, my teenage daughter. But why would I save someone's board? How would I know to go to their board? This is as a user. I mean, why are boards important? I know that's probably a very basic question. But. Well, the boards is a place where you can just organize the things that you're saving. So if you're coming, if you're talking about this from the perspective of a Pinterest user, not as a someone who is in business trying to market on Pinterest, but as an actual user, the people who go there, um, they create boards because they want to organize. So this is like um, electronic hoarding, okay? <laughs> it's what <laughs> someone shared with me of what they said Pinterest is is electronic hoarding, where they create a board, and that board is focused around one certain topic, and they want to pin things to that board so they can go back and find it later. So it's kind of like a file cabinet. And you're gonna store all of your stuff that you wanna go to later inside of the file cabinet is what it's like. Um, if you are um, a business, we think of it differently. We think of it more like shopping at a mall or shopping at stores and your board is like a store and you wanna kind of treat it that way and organize it in a way. But from the perspective of a Pinterest user, it's different. They wanna keep that information for later stored away. Then they'll go back to their board where they can find it again and take action on it. And they, they, you know, people can get lost on Pinterest for hours, spending tons and tons and tons of time there. Um, so it's, it's quite wild. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about this. Um, yesterday, there was that live that we were talking about yesterday with Pinterest, and it was with Tailwind. And there's an article here, and I can share this in the group for those who are interested in reading more. They wrote this article up before that interview happened, and there's a lot of really, really good stuff to get from this, um, this article. They're talking about the new profile. 
and how it you get this cover image at the top of that profile, um, which is cool. And it's going to show you your latest pins to all the boards and your most recent pins. But what's neat is that you can, and I still don't have this pro profile. You don't that, have it yet? No, I still don't have it. I'm still waiting. Um, um, Teresa, you're very uh, scratchy. Is it? Okay. Sorry. And delayed for some reason. Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll see if I can't fix that. And I'll get out some more things. Maybe that will help it take up a little bit less bandwidth. <laughs> we'll see here. But there is a little pencil mark in your at the top right hand corner of your dynamic board cover. And you can change that to feature pins from any board that you want. So I didn't know if everyone knew that or understood that, but you can change these pins up at the top of what's being featured there. There are some people who are creating a board just to put pins in there so that they look a certain way for the top of the profile. I don't think that's necessary. Just choose one of your best boards, preferably your store board, and make that your cover image up at the top of your new profile. So that's what's been new that's been happening lately. And um, a lot of great, great information and insight here. This is the stuff that I was interested in here. Focus on the first five pins of the day. Mm -hmm. And we confirmed yesterday, Pinterest, that the question with the Pinterest rep, um, Sarah, that they interviewed beforehand before doing that, that big interview, they asked her, does it matter if you pin manually into Pinterest the first five pins of the day or if you use a third party app like Tailwind and they said it does not matter. So you could do it either way. You could schedule it in using Tailwind or you can do it manually. It's going to give distribution priority to the first five pins of the day that you pin. So make sure that the first five pins that you pin are your pins and make sure they go into relevant boards. So it gives priority, distribution prior, priority, meaning those five pins that are going into relevant boards, they're keyworded up in your pin descriptions, um, they are your pins, they're going to give those pins the most reach out of any other pins that you pin that day. So just be aware of what you're pinning and make your first five the best. Um, check your links. Make sure that you add a link. There's a lot of people that don't. And I, every time I try to save someone else's pin and there's no link, I end up not saving it because I don't want to take the time to go hunt down their link. Um, I definitely am not going to save any pins that don't have a URL link or there's a broken link. There's a 404 behind it. I never want to do that. Here's why. Because those pins are penalized, meaning that um, Pinterest is not going to show those pins out to the rest of the public. They're not going to go um, out into your smart into the smart feed and get as much traffic or distance with those pins because of the broken link. So they do have a way of, of checking that and seeing if it's a broken link or not. And it will not give you much traction. So don't pin other people's pins with broken, broken links, 404s behind them, or there's no URL link. Never pin those. They will actually do nothing for you. They're not going to hurt you, but what's going to happen is if you're trying to use that pin to draw more people into your board, it won't work. It's not going to go viral. There's no chance for it. It's not going to build up traction at all. So you don't want to do that. Leave those alone. Um, okay, then there's other things here that they're talking about. Multiple images can dramatically increase the distribution potential for your content. And they say it's okay to have multiple pins that lead to the same web page. In fact, they said it can be beneficial to save a variety of, of images that might appeal to different types of pinners. So not only do they say it's okay for you to create multiple pins that go to the same URL link and page, but they encourage it. They really encourage it. And I think it's because they are truly based on trying to help businesses is what I've been um, seeing as a theme here in the last couple of years for Pinterest. Now, what they do say is that if you create multiple pins for the same product page URL link, you do need to change up the description for each pin. 
And it says, try focusing on one keyword phrase for one and a different keyword phrase for the other. That way your one piece of content will show up in several different searches. Now you can A-B split test your pins too. So if you don't want to focus on, uh, let's say that you're just testing out colors, then you would want to keep the same pin description for all of your pins if there's only one difference and that's the color of your pin. That's going to give you that, that test to see what color. But if you want to test the keywords, you need to change the pin description. But what Pinterest is verifying for us is that if you want your pins in general to have a bigger reach, you can have multiple pins, but have one keyword that you are focusing on and make sure it's different for each pin on each pin description. Pin early and often. So they're saying at least 45 days in advance of a holiday or any kind of, of event. So at this point, um, you know, Mother's Day is here, graduation is here, and it's a little bit late. You can still keep pinning if you want to, uh, if you already have your board created, but I don't think I would, I would go through the effort of making a board at this point. What I would do is concentrate on the next big event, which would be something seasonal like summertime. I would concentrate on 4th of July, if you have anything that is patriotic, or just a general patriotic board where you could put your patriotic items in that board, that patriotic board will actually do well all year, but it will take off even further during the summertime when people are looking for those things. So always plan. If you are sitting in Q1, you need to be creating your boards for Q2 and start pinning into them very, very early. So they're saying that people are planners and they will t take action on those pins, even though you think it's too early they will start taking action on them. And you could even start your promoted pins earlier too for those types of pins. Okay, be the first to pin your content. This was fascinating to me. Pinterest loves new content. All right, so you wanna get your content on Pinterest as soon as it's published and it will be prioritized. So you wanna get your, your pins and your stuff up there because it's brand new, it's new stuff. Also, I've been reading where if you're sharing other people's content that is not on Pinterest yet, that can get some uh, prioritization into your board and build up traction because it's new stuff that's not on Pinterest, even though it's not your stuff. So I felt like that was kind of interesting. And it is worth it then to go out and find some uh, other people who are writing really great blogs or articles or anything that could support what you have available that is in your niche area. And that can also help you in that way. Save to the relevant boards. And you want to save to the most relevant board first. That's really important because that pin will be prioritized in distribution. Now, yesterday, what Sarah said, she tacked onto that and she said, which was interesting, is the pin... The, the first five pins that you need to get them into your most relevant boards, you need to make sure that the pin description is keyworded well and your board description is keyworded well. She confirmed that the keywords in your board description do matter. So you want to get a lot of really great keywords in that board description. Here's why. When those pins, the first five, are put into the most relevant board and you've got everything in place with your keywords, what happens is the information that is attached to that pin gets distributed out further, which includes your board. So what, what's being attached to that pin in that, that bigger prioritized distribution reach in the smart feed is your board description and everything else inside of that board. So if you're wondering how I've been able to rank the boards up high, this confirms it right here. This is all part of how you do that and it's not that hard to do. So the relevant boards, I thought this, this was a really, really uh, great to kind of confirm, you know, how, how is it that you can, you can SEO boards up pretty easily and rank them up high. And this is a big part of that because the information in your board is then attached to that pin and it goes out further. 
Okay. Um, then of course you want to add, you know, the Pinterest uh, save up buttons out to your websites, wherever you're at to make sure that, that people are able to pin there. So those are just a few things that I thought were, were kind of um, interesting that uh, that was written up actually last week before that interview happened with Sarah. I need to go back over and watch that interview several times more and take some notes. If you're interested, what I would like to do for everybody is to take notes of that mm -hmm. because these are new developments in the last couple weeks of things that Pinterest has said. They have been willing to say, here's what you need to do if you really want to get serious about our platform and understand it well, do it well, and get your, your pins for, to a further reach. I would love to take the time to write that down and take notes, and then you all can have the notes so that you can start using this as your pin strategy. I think that would be cool to have it all in one place so that you can refer to it often. Um, videos are great, but it's hard when you forget stuff and you gotta go watch the video again. You have to keep watching over and over. So if you have something written down, that makes it a lot easier so you could take action on it quickly. Okay, we got some questions here. Yeah, sorry, the sound is, the sound was, it's because of the bandwidth, I think. It's better now. Yeah, because I took away the yeah. screen share. <laughs> I had, there was just too many things going and I don't think that Belive was able to, uh, uh, to handle all of that. Um, so sorry about that. And Nancy says, way to go, Jill. Thank Congratulations you. <laughs> <laughs> on your board. That's awesome. Let's answer some other questions here that have happened. Um, oh, yeah. Hashtags. Yes. You do want to start adding hashtags to your to your pin descriptions. I don't know if they are picking up in the board descriptions. I don't know. I've been including a couple. And I don't necessarily know. We'll have to keep checking that. I did do a search, a hashtag search, and then I, I went out to boards to see if there were boards that were popping up. You could you could try that and, and find out if um, any of those are, are popping up your board or not. Hashtags is kind of a new development, but Pinterest did say that they are going to give it more weight with those hashtags now. So I, I, would, I would definitely include hashtags. They're well worth it. Um, whether or not it's really effective on the board, I think I need to watch that video again yesterday because I did talk about hashtags. And I wanna get that clarity again from what Sarah said from Pinterest uh, to answer that a little bit better. It does not hurt to put some hashtags in your board description. Just do it at the very end of your board description. It's not gonna hurt at all. Um, things may change down the road too. And Pinterest could give more and more weight to those hashtags and start including the weight in the, the boards as well. Here's another question here from Nancy. How picky are you about the landing pages for the pins? I've been finding many landing pages that don't relate to the pin. Yes, ugly ads don't load quickly or difficult to find the content. I don't want to pin junk, so I've been clicking through to landing pages before scheduling pins, but it takes a long time. Yeah, you have to, you do have to be careful about that. Um, I don't want Bronca links. I don't want 401 or 404 pages because that actually uh, doesn't help you. It can hurt you. So you want to make sure that the links are not broken. Some of the bloggers do have a lot of ads on their blogs. That's how they make money. That's their revenue. It can get overboard to the point they've got so many ads running that their their website runs very slow. And that, you know, if that's the case and it's going to take five minutes for the website to load up, you know, I might skip it, move on to someone else. So you do want to uh, check the content behind some of those pins to see if it's good quality stuff. It's because there could be a pretty picture, but if it's not, if the content isn't serving people well, they're not going to, they're not going to want to save your pin and keep that momentum building for you. Uh, is part of the problem there. So it is a good idea to check um, some of the links to some of those pins. In Tailwind, it does tell me if the URL link does not match the content on the pin. 
you'll get a, a little red triangle that says, check the link, it does not seem to match the pin. So it does help me there and I just automatically um, delete that pin. I won't distribute it at that point because Tailwind did a nice job of checking it for me. If it's um, a link, the URL, the URL, I see this a lot, the URL link of the pin is to the URL, URL link of the pin on Pinterest. I don't know if you can follow that. <laughs> Some yeah. people do that. They use the URL link of the pin on Pinterest as the URL link or website link in the pin itself. That's what they do. Pinterest does not like that and they won't do anything with that pin. In fact, they, they start blocking them. They want true URL link outside of Pinterest. So don't use the Pinterest URL link of any kind inside of your pins as a URL link. They don't like that. They, they'll block the pin and Tailwind gives um, that little red triangle that says, we can't show this pin, Pinterest is blocking it because it has a Pinterest URL link. In other words, the link, the pin is linking back to itself and it doesn't really serve anyone well. That's not what, uh, that's not what Pinterest wants. They really do want it to go out to somewhere where it can benefit people. Yeah, Jody says it's annoying. It's very annoying. So if you see that stuff, don't don't pin those types of pins either. There's a lot of people that do that with those kinds of things. Is there any other questions? Any questions for Jill while she's here? You can pick her brain. Don't ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> pick her brain. Find out what's going on. No, no, no. But this is great. I think we should have everybody come on once in a while. Yes. And I think it'd be great as a group. We were just talking beforehand about maybe switching over to a, a different service like Zoom where we could have um, more people chatting. With with BeLive, it's okay, but I can only have one. And then as you can see, we had all kinds of issues when I tried to just share my screen with the two of us. It just, it was too much bandwidth. It couldn't handle it. So, you know, it's kind of... Um, frustrating, but uh, I'm, I'm highly thinking about switching over. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here we um, go. Here we go. It, Good question for you, Jill. Yeah. Um, not that many, less than 10, less than 20, definitely less than 20. Some of them ranked just with two or three a day, I think. And I don't know because I mean, I just looked at my boards last week and my VA doesn't post that much. I mean, she does, 20 posts a, a day or so. So, but that's mm -hmm. all different boards. So I think it's consistency. As long as you do something every day, you're rewarded. There you go. Yep. I think. Mm -hmm. It's true. You don't have to do a high number of pins per day in order to get some good traction and, and momentum on that. I have a, a question. Lot mm -hmm. um, is the maximum number of pins you should do a day 30? I heard that somewhere. Um, that, what I've that been, 30, what I've been reading with research of people testing it as they say 50, that anything okay. above 50 really doesn't help. Okay. Um, most people don't do more than 40 per day, um, or 30. And those are people that have a lot of their own content. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing, if you're trying to work out a 50, 50 split, that's 15 of your own pins. Yeah. So you gotta make sure that you're creating 15 fresh pins and you've got that in your schedule or every single day. That's a lot, that's a lot. You really have to have a team member dedicated to just creating pins for you, um, which is what I do because there's no, I don't I don't have time to create pins, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fun, I love it, I enjoy it, but I don't have to, I just don't, the reality of it is I don't have time, so I hired a VA and she does, she does that, she creates pins for me and I've, I've started training her on some other things um, inside of my account where um, she's gonna start practicing some more stuff inside of my account and use it as a, a way of practicing and training of some more detailed stuff with uh, how to do that. In fact, I, I asked, um, I have four VAs, I asked all of them just yesterday how they felt about that, of uh, training them on some specific skills and they were excited. They were excited, they, they don't have any of this uh, anywhere 
and they they really want to learn and um, thought it was really exciting. So. Um, yes, Nancy says, if you're considering switching from BeLive, I'd like a recorded video that I can play back at a faster speed than one. Yes, I agree <laughs> with you. I don't know if uh, you can do that with Zoom, um, but you can with YouTube. So what happens is, is all of these videos then go over to YouTube and you can subscribe to Pin Traffic Power on YouTube and just watch it there and speed speed it up so that you don't have to sit for a long period of time um, and go through these in order to get the information that you need. So I agree with you. I do like to speed up the videos too because some of it is just casual talk conversation and you're not getting to the things that, that you really want to take action on in order to get your business um, moving forward. Any other thoughts or questions from anybody out there? This is your chance to, to ask Jill questions while she's here. You gotta, you gotta ask her. She's got this amazing business running. Lots of Thank good you. things that are going on. Well, it's only because you were my coach oh. a long time ago. <laughs> I got into wholesale yeah. in this weird niche. So yeah, yeah. So full disclosure, uh, Jill was, <laughs> Jill was yeah. was one of my coaching students. Yeah, she did get into wholesale, um, and yeah. uh, doing very well with e-commerce. Um, in lots of different areas and now has moved into print on demand some other things and has been uh, like it way better doing well with um, yeah I like it too um, doing well with uh, Pinterest now as well and she just learns quickly and takes action on stuff fast and this it is awesome here we go we got some questions for Jill another one from no. Jody no, um, I post manually because I'm lazy, but my VA does it to Tailwind, and that Tailwind's way more efficient. I just because it spreads it out over the day or over the night. It's a better time period. Yeah, Pinterest told us it's better to pin at nighttime, like late afternoon to nighttime. So if you have a VA who lives in a different country, um, you can have them pin during their morning. Mm -hmm. And daytime. So if they're working in the morning and, and afternoon, morning to afternoon, that's our nighttime. And they can pin then and it will appear during our nighttime and it will give it a little bit further reach. That's when most people are on Pinterest inside of the United States mm -hmm. is uh, in the evening time. Um, so you can manually pin, have your VAs manually pin if you want, or they can load up your, your scheduler inside of, of Tailwind for you. And Tailwind picks those. Uh, optimal times for you, which is pretty cool with that. Yeah. And she says, and the rest through a scheduler. Do you use a yeah. scheduler at all yet? Yes. Well, the Tailwind schedule? Is that what yeah, we're Well, about? any kind of a scheduler using Tailwind or anything else? Um, They're just the Tailwind one. Yeah. The Tailwind? Yeah. Um, for scheduling. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, that's a that's a tough question. <laughs> well, it's hard to tell if I've seen an increased sales. Um, is there a way to to know? I mean, I have, but I don't know if it's because of Pinterest. Um, a lot of things are on Amazon. It could just be random sales there. I don't. Yeah, there's no. It depends on where your stuff is at that you are um, promoting. So for example, are you doing links that go straight to Amazon or do you make them go to your website first, then Amazon? Um, there's a group of products that go directly to Amazon and there's a group that goes directly to my website. Just depends. Okay. Um, because Amazon does the fulfillment for me. Um, so I don't know, mm -hmm. you know. So I here's something tell. that you could do is on your website, um, get the Amazon Associates link, mm -hmm. and then you can set your, um, trying to think of what it's called. You can set up the link in a way where it will track a tracking link. And you know mm -hmm. that I, I just name it and I will say Shopify or store. And I name the other one after maybe the blog and mm -hmm. then I know which one is it's going to and you can use that affiliate link inside of your 
website, that way you can tell if you get an affiliate sale, you know that people are then coming from Pinterest to your website. And it doesn't matter if your product sells or not, you just know that there's something happening. In other words, you can also check your analytics too. And I know mm -hmm. you mentioned you needed help with reading analytics. Um, mm -hmm. So we should probably cover that again. I did do a live on that about uh, Google Analytics. I would definitely get your domain into uh, Google Analytics and get that set up. There's gonna be a lot more information that you can get inside of Google Analytics to find out what's going on and see what your number one ref refer is. For most people, Pinterest does tend to be like a number two and you can mm -hmm. get it to number one if you want. Um, and that's many times organic of where that's happening. So if you do see that refer coming from Pinterest, you know that there are people coming from Pinterest to your website, that they're coming in through your pins. That's how they're getting there. Well, I saw in Google um, Pinterest analytics, one of my pins that I haven't been pinning a lot of was the number one this week, which I thought was mm -hmm. the Father's Day gift. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, okay, that's odd. But yeah. yeah, and you have a Shopify store. You've got a yeah. Shopify store, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, so you can, through Shopify, it will tell you the latest pins mm -hmm. that brought people into your store. It will show you that, especially if you use the Shopify app. Right. It actually helps you see it better there than if you just log into your store on the desktop. Mm -hmm. And it will also show you the link where the sale came from. So right. you might be able to see then, did that come in through Pinterest or which way did it come in through? Um, and that that can be... Uh, useful. But yeah, Google Analytics, um, Pinterest Analytics, Tailwind Analytics. <laughs> I use all of those. They're, they're, they all are going to give you a lot of valuable information and then go into Shopify and check there to see where that's coming in from. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Jody says I tend to be on Pinterest around midnight, but don't think that would be the best time to pin manually. Actually it is. <laughs> so if you don't have tailwind, then just pin manually. That is the best time to pin is at midnight. There are people where I, I see pins that go out like at three in the morning. And apparently there's people on Pinterest <laughs> at three in the morning because they, they really do get a lot of traction and it's kind of uh, it's kind of wild. Um, Yes, the tag. This is what we're, that's what I was trying to think of. Thank you, Jody, for that. <laughs> With the uh, Amazon Associates, it's a tag. Yes. Oh, yes. This is different, though. I think you're talking about not the Amazon Associates. You're talking about this pin code. There's this new pin code. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you can put that in your store. I was hearing about that. I noticed that pop up in the last two weeks, the pin code, the new pin code. But it's only on people with the new profiles. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a new profile yet. I'm still waiting <laughs> and I don't have the pin code, but for um, the other uh, Pinterest accounts that I've been working in for other people, I noticed those pin codes popping up and I thought, Hmm, I wonder what this is. It asks you if you want to get a pin code for your board. And I thought, mm -hmm. what's that? So it's a way of you being able to display your board in your store on your website is what my understanding of that is. Um, instead of trying to build out the whole widget, you can get the uh, the pin code and it's supposed to be um, uh, faster and easier. So I wanna experiment with that and see what happens. I've, I've been wanting to experiment with the Shopify store and how do we get something featured there tactfully, like a pin, a board, whatever. So it doesn't take away from the product itself and mm -hmm. discourage people from buying the product. But at the same time, if they're not going to buy it in the moment, I want them to at least save the pin, save it for later, come back to the store so they can remember where they saw that product, come back to it and then buy it. Because sometimes you stumble on something, you don't have time to, you know, make it go all the way through the check, the checkout shopping cart system. And then you forget and you lose it. So I would like to encourage the shoppers to have something that they can save for later. Um, and I want to figure out how to do that real tactfully uh, in Shopify where it's not distracting to those people. Awesome. Hey, Phil, how's it going? Okay. Any other questions for Jill or any questions in general? All right. So what I want to do is create an outline for you 
of the amazing new developments that came out from Sarah, who did this huge um, interview with Tailwind. And um, I wanna get that outline, get that out to everybody, because this is gonna be your new pin strategy. And it is information that is direct from Pinterest. So we know that it's it works. Um, we need the real stuff. We don't need people's people coming up with theories. And we've had theories by just testing. But when you get confirmation, that is a gold mine. And we need to start acting on that um, and go from there. Yeah, Nancy says, I put my pin picture as one of the product images in my store. I'm not sure if that's cool or not. I've thought about doing that. Um, I still didn't know if that was distracting or not. Um, so I'm not sure. A lifestyle image it would not be would not be a problem if you have a lifestyle image and make it like a bigger image, lifestyle image, and put your watermark on that image, and then people could save it. Um, but the other pins that I do, I don't know if it would if it would be distracting and or not. So that's something that I want to play around with and do a test to see ways that I can incorporate pins inside of the store itself to get people to pin my stuff, my stuff out, because ultimately that's what I want. I want the, I don't want to, I don't want to be the only person marketing my stuff. I want everyone else to do it. <laughs> Does that sound lazy? <laughs> the way to go. I don't want to do all my own work all the time. <laughs> I want you to do my work for me, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, that sounds terrible. But, you know, if they're coming here, it's like a what you're doing is you're creating a loop or a circle. A cyclical effect is you want them to discover you on Pinterest and then go to your store or your website. And if they can't take action on anything while they're there and they're being introduced to your store, but they kind of like the stuff there, they just want to remember it so they can come back to it later. They may have lost that pin because mm -hmm. <laughs> they went down this, this dark rabbit trail and they can't find their way back and they don't want to lose a the site. They're like, what do I do now? Well, while they're there, if they don't have time to buy your stuff or to check out what you have further in your store, I want to provide them with something to save for later, a pin where they could take that and save it right back to Pinterest again. So you're kind of doing full circle. That is serving the customer by helping them to remember who you are and how they found you and remember your stuff but at the same time it's serving you because they're doing your marketing for you so when they save it on to their pinterest it goes out to their followers and now more people are going to become familiar with your brand so that's that's ultimately what i want is i want that full circle effect effect and it just keeps spinning over and over and over for you and you don't really have to do a ton of work because you drive the people in then those people start doing your marketing for you. They come back around and then they invite their friends to come in too. That's, that's what I'm looking at um, is to work a little bit smarter and not harder. Okay. Well, I want to wrap it up here. This is awesome, Jill. Thank and you. To, to thank you for participating in the board challenge and getting your, uh, well, by the way, she had more than one board. Yes. That ranked high. It's just that the other two, we don't want to share. This yeah. one is okay to share, but the other two we don't want to share. Um, she's got more than one board that she ranked up in the top position in one week. Yeah, so, one of them's number one. So, so I, I wanted to, to make that real clear to everybody that um, it wasn't just one board. It was several boards that you that you did, and that was awesome. And I, as a way of thanking you, I want to give you, um, shall we call it a gift certificate? Sure. I don't know what you want to call it. We'll call it a gift certificate for $200 for anything that you want. Really cool. Because I have you can, questions. You can, <laughs> <laughs> you can pick whatever you want to do. You know, if you want to have a, a private um, consultation or coaching session, if you want to save it and wait for some new ebooks or courses <laughs> that are going to be in development down the road, um, you can save it for that, whatever you want to do. Um, cool. But just Thank know you. that, that uh, I'm more than happy to give you $200. And I just wanted to make it a gift certificate credit so that you can choose 
what you want to do that can help serve you the best. Cause I don't, you're already inside of the course, so you don't really need another one of those. <laughs> no, no, that I'm good. But yeah, because I'm doing some things, and I'm like, oh, I need to pick your brain. I just don't get it. So there's so always that will, something. That will, yeah, that will help you uh, do whatever you want there. And there's going to be some new things that, that will be added uh, down the road here in the future. Um, so you can save it for that if you want. So two hundred dollars is yours to spend however way you <laughs> want, whenever you want. There's no, there's no expiration date. <laughs> It is yours to have. Any other last questions for for Jill or, or comments? This was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Really fun. I you love it. I do. like it. I feel like I'm not talking to myself all the time. Well, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's great. I see why people get on these calls and just laugh and it's not it's fun to have someone else at the other end. It is. So you're not talking to nobody. <laughs> and, you know, in the internet world <laughs> right right you feel like you're talking to yourself you stare at yourself on the screen like well this is wonderful <laughs> this is like uh, every day right <laughs> yeah, i'm just staring at the screen nothing's new I like to have people to to communicate with so if you would like to be on <laughs> a live uh let me know and maybe you want to take a board challenge yeah hmm, i don't know maybe mm -hmm. maybe somebody else out there wants to take a board <laughs> challenge do it. If you can you can get a, at least one board ranked up in a week. I bet you could. Oh, and you can. Uh, you can do it. Go back and watch the previous videos. I showed you exactly what to do, how to do it. It's very simple. It's not hard. Um, and I think that's, I, I don't see any other questions or comments. So I think that's it for today. Thank you so much, Jill. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations on getting your boards ranked up high. Hopefully you'll start to see some more followers to your boards. You're going to get more traction built up. It's only been a week. Yeah. So now if you just keep that going and get that momentum built, start doing that to all of your boards. Yep. And you're going to you start seeing it. some bigger results. All right. Let's end for today. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. We'll see you. Talk later. Bye.